Members of the jury, you are the sole judges of the facts in this case, and to those facts as you find them from the sworn testimony of the witnesses before you, you will apply the law given to you by the court. The burden of proof is on the plaintiff to establish his case by a fair preponderance of the credible evidence in the case. The plaintiff claims that the defendant was negligent. The plaintiff must prove the negligence of the defendant. The defendant claims that the plaintiff was guilty of contributory negligence. The defendant must prove that because that is the law in a death case. I have told you that the plaintiff must make out his case by a fair preponderance of the credible evidence in the case. By a fair preponderance of the evidence is meant the greater weight of the evidence, not necessarily the evidence of the greater number of witnesses, but the evidence of those witnesses whom you see fit to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, I charge you what I am about to say because there is sometimes a misunderstanding about it. In a civil case, the plaintiff does not have to make out his case beyond a reasonable doubt, as in a criminal case. In a civil case, the plaintiff must make out his case by a fair preponderance of the credible evidence in the case. I believe I have charged you what the preponderance of evidence means, and I now charge you that the credible evidence is the believable evidence, evidence in which you place confidence as to its truthfulness, and I state the rule again, that the plaintiff must make out his case by a fair preponderance of the credible evidence in the case. Now, it is your duty, wherever you can, to reconcile conflicting statements of witnesses on opposite sides of the case, so as to make every witness speak the truth, if you can. But if you are satisfied that any witnesses are not speaking the truth, it is then your duty and your privilege to decide which of the witnesses speak the truth, and in so doing you must take into consideration not only the interest of any of the witnesses, whose testimony you are considering here in the result of your verdict, but you must also take into consideration his demeanor and behavior on the stand before you, because that frequently helps you to decide whether or not he is telling the truth. I mean, by his demeanor or his behavior on the stand, the readiness with which he answers or fails to answer questions any characteristic of the witness or anything that the witness does on the stand, you may take into consideration in making up your minds as to whether or not he is telling the truth. If a witness deliberately testifies falsely as to any material fact in the case, you may entirely disregard the evidence of the witness, but you need not necessarily do so. You can take the part which you believe is true and disbelieve or disregard the part which you think is false. You will not be governed by the decision of the court of any motion made in the case, except motions as to the admissibility of evidence. The net result of the decision of any other motions by the court, except motions relating to evidence, is that you are called upon to decide the case upon the facts. You will not be Skype. It's always doing this shit. There's a problem with the call. Blah blah 